All right, well, time to uh, start the cabinet. So I went and got uh, to Home Depot, and thanks Cougar for doing it. Showing us the way there. I did see Chris's, I guess his name is Chris's video a long time ago, and that thing was just too out of hand. But anyway, uh, the way you did it gave us uh, hope that we can do our own. So thank you. And um, yeah, just got back, and I'm going to go with uh, the sanded pine rather than the MDF. Um, I just like it better, MDF, I'm not a big fan of. And so yeah, uh, I'm going to make some drawers. Oh, yeah, and then for the back, I got this stuff. Uh, it's uh, underlayment, and it kind of has a red a red tint to it, so... Sorry, all over the place. You'll have the drawers and kind of like the white sanded pine and that for the back. All right, and away we go. All right, well, now <clears throat> we have uh, the first uh, drawer completed. Um, definitely some learning... Not too much of a learning curve, but made some mistakes. Uh, I had to go back out. I was trying to use drywall screws, and um, that didn't work. So what I found out was um, these, these number six, number eight by an inch, seemed to work pretty good. Uh, but you definitely need to get this a set of uh, these guys, the uh, pilot hole uh, set, and for yeah, so. Is it? Yeah, they, they look like this. So yeah, drill your pilot holes, and then I did the uh, underlayment in red in the back, uh, and then the sanded pine and the goofballs there made these eight and eight and three quarter. Um, you can see how bad the blade was. It burned the wood. It didn't, had an old blade in there at Home Depot, and it just they made a mess of it. Um, but yeah, be careful with those guys. So now I tried to make up the half down here by doing eight and a half high, but they made them eight and eight and three quarter. So I don't know if I'm going to go with eight and three quarter or eight, eight and a half just to make it, you know, eight. So anyway, ready to go. Seven more. All right. So I got um, stuff for the back and the sides. That's three quarter sanded pine so uh by two feet and i got some more uh drawer material should have i'm gonna try to do one side at a time so four drawers and the middle piece and i went with the 22 inch um uh <clears throat> drawer slides ball bearings and then they're side mounted like this um, but takes a little bit more measuring, you know, up to here, and then you have to transfer that to your sides. But uh, they're supposed to be—they're supposed to be capable of holding 100 pounds. So, and it has a soft touch feature, I guess. So uh, right at the end, it kind of has like a that trick kind of when you push it in. So we'll see how bad I can screw this up. Peace. All right, I got my uh, pieces cut here for the sides. Um, and have the rails out and I'm um, not laying it all out and for a 48 inch side piece here this would be the outside you want to go three quarter and measure from the top 11 inches and then another three quarter gap uh, 11 inches and another three quarter gap and so on and so forth and then for <coughs> the drawers The rails two inches from the bottom, um, and then flush to the back because they're a little different. These are side mounted, um, so you'll see that when you put rails on, measure from the bottom, not from this. Measure from the bottom two inches up, and then you can see how this works. Um, top of your back of the of the drawer is going to be right in that gap space and it goes so on and so forth so um, <clears throat> they kind of set up like that 
so it's a little tight but there is that gap to ensure that everything is going to be fine so all right hey uh, quick update here is what you want uh, in order to reinforce the uh, ball bearing slides number eight half inch sheet metal screws pan heads specifically so they don't have that angled um, uh, from the head to, to the actual threads it's not angled it's actually flat so then you fill these fill these suckers up wherever you can with them to help reinforce and uh, add with the weight weight distribution okay so here we are um, for the status of this uh, quote-unquote project um, I uh, just finished today um, getting the middle section done with the rails and um, getting this kind of uh, square and inserted the, the boxes themselves um, and so this is how these rails will work they'll come out stand and I did support them in the back I'm gonna have to take these out these rails out and then uh, reinforce them some more with number eight machine pan head screws just for some extra security but when you get these right, and let me tell you, it's not a nightmare, but it made me all pretty much regret even starting this, is getting this particular side rail mounted system, all these rails to uh, get in sync. Um, oh, and then the soft close feature of this, these rails is just boop, money. But um, if you're off on your measurements, even an eighth, and that propagates up uh, as you make your, your marks, Man, it's not fun. It just takes the fun out of everything because I've had to take these rails on and off um, multiple times in order to get them uh, at least kind of on the same plane and uh, looking all right. And I'm also gonna put a, a base. So this sits on a base so these, just, these aren't digging into either carpet or eventually if they get to like hardwood or tile surface. I want there to be a base with feet so it's elevated off whatever surface it's on and obviously a cap and the back and obviously another set of four um, but yeah it's um it's coming along but it's it's not fun so uh, and it's not fun if you've never done it but at least I get the, the drawers work so that's pretty cool and um, yeah I'm happy all right, till next time. Okay, now I'm ready. Uh, I have <clears throat> to has it to this stage. Now I'm ready to um, measure for my bottoms and my tops. And what you want to do is rack rack this so it's level. So I took the the, the one off the top, and uh, not because I want to turn this upside down to measure for the bottom. So uh, I would start. Uh, over there uh, just nailing one in uh, these strips these extra strips I got from cutting this and then um, you could pull pull push or pull um, the sides these strips like push and pull it until you you can actually hold hold the level on the side and push or pull um, and then ha hammer hammer it in when it's when it's level. Now I'll just do it on the back. I'm going to turn it upside down and uh, measure for the bottom. All right, we're upside down now for the bottom piece. I had it just cut at uh, Home Depot. Uh, and for to attach this to, uh, I'm going to use um, number eight inch and three quarter. I was going to use 10, but uh, this, this should do the trick. I hope. I hope that's enough because this thing is going to be pretty burly when it's done. Okay, I have the bottom attached. Um, it's not pretty, but it's going to work. Um, I just had to make sure the front was flush and, and didn't. Had to fiddle with it a little to. You know, I went corner to corner and then. Uh, I don't know. It worked and the back didn't come out exactly flush. It's hard to see in the camera view but uh, anyway uh, once we put it back on we should be good to go
and if I have to chisel a little bit off it'll I'll do that but anyway um, and then I put these feet on these are what are these have ever built heavy-duty pads uh, because um, in case it ever changes surface like I said before and then if it isn't carpet I don't want this bottom drawer to be uh, don't want this bottom drawer to be uh, hit sitting right on top of carpet so all right on to the top all right so I have my back on here back and sides I got everything plum um, and uh, square I guess <laughs> it's racked uh, it's level and the next step I guess is to put the top on I want a three-quarter top I have a three-quarter bottom um, and because I don't want any screws on my uh, like on the top I got these little L bracket things um, and I have those installed in place because it, it as you can see I can still well it's hard to tell there but I can still kind of move this thing around it's not I want this to be solid right so uh, instead of screwing having screw holes through the top for a better finish I'm gonna uh, use those and then come turn it upside down and then screw the top in that way um, and put maybe one here and one here and then one up here and one up here because a gap the gap to the top of that uh, top drawer is significant enough that those brackets are probably won't even be able to see them. So that's where I am with this project, which is becoming um, a serious PETA, and I have no idea what it would entail, but uh, yeah, we're doing it, I guess. So yeah, sorry, I should cut that short, but this lighting sucks in here. But uh, you get your top on. And this this one isn't cut properly. You can see how that's not working. <laughs> it's flush in the front, and that's what it looks like in the back. Uh, so that's the second piece of three quarter I ruined um, at home despot, and uh, that's not cheap. So make sure you measure. And I I'm not, never tried to be a cabinet maker, but what I'd want to do is just tack 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 these and then go in, go in and then start screwing off these L brackets and then take the tacks out fill with wood filler they'll be ready and then um, start with trim all right see ya. all right so I finally have all my drawers in and um, man when I had it hooked up before when on just a, like a demo with um, chairs as backdrops and Get it, you, when you can get the drawers to act with these these uh, slides the way they want to, they worked flawlessly. But as soon as I racked the, the side, the middle, and the other side, and got them level, and they just don't play nice. I'm telling you. Um, but you hear that? So there, there's you gotta kind of work them. Um, or take them out and kind of use the X-Acto knife to trim some some of the pieces away. And for example, down here, it's actually gonna at the very end. Oh, it didn't do it. That's the top part here, up against the bottom here. And I thought I had everything <laughs> measured right. So the way it's it, it, it the way this can move as you make it makes it very challenging and really doesn't even look symmetrical here. Um, uh, but it's I've you know I've never done this before. But uh, in terms of let's see, I don't like that. But it's, I think over time that may adjust itself. But in terms of uh, weight, let's take uh, here's a 15 pound barbell. We'll stick it at the very end. Uh, completely unloaded and then we'll get another one oh. not that's that heavy but let's put that right next to there see what happens so there you have 30 pounds at the end of an empty box no bending or stress and I can imagine if there was like equal weight distribution throughout the, the box these things could hold iron ore if you wanted them to. So, 
um, yeah, 60 or 70 pounds throughout the box should not be a problem. So, uh, there you go. All right, so <clears throat> this is what I came up with finally to secure the top. Uh, no idea what I'm doing, like I said before, so don't judge. But uh, let's get the top on and see how this goes. Alright, I have it uh, tacked off on all four corners and I I made the, the front as flush as I could and because no one's really going to see the back and you can cheat a little bit in the back but it turned out okay I guess. So all I have to do is uh, <clears throat> go inside here and fill up those brackets. Hopefully it'll be enough. Alright, so uh, all of the brackets are now... Uh, screwed off and um, probably need one more in the back and one in the corner because you can almost lift it in places it's still you can see light coming through when you lift it in the back but it's pretty dang sturdy um, and uh, there's wood filler where the nails were so now there won't be any screws showing at the top or where there screw you know any kind of screw hole so yeah, ready for some plexiglass. That should be fun and uh, start to sand it down a little bit. And oh, by the way, I used a birch, three quarter birch plywood they had there at Home Depot. Uh, it's a little more expensive, but it has cool like green patterns. So I just, you know, so I want to do it more of a hardwood look. So yeah, on, on to the next step. <clears throat> All right, on to the plexiglass here. Um, Here's the sheet I got. Um, I don't know what the dimensions are, but it's uh, the quarter inch. I guess it's 0.22 inches. Yeah, 18 by 24. So if I'm lucky, I could potentially get uh, four drawer faces out of this. And um, I found these. Uh, Bosh, hold on. Anyway, if it would focus, it won't. What the problem is, but that yeah, it's for epoxy glass. There you go. These um, jigsaw blades. So it's supposed to go really smooth, and uh, I know there's a few videos where you can learn to do this, but by scoring it and breaking it, but invariably. That doesn't work out from what I understand, so uh, if you have a jigsaw, I recommend that. And the drilled, um, just a regular, for my purposes, is going to be a 1 8 uh, drill bit. And hopefully I don't crack this stuff all to hell, but uh, we'll find out right now. <clears throat> Alright, well, uh, the, the blades work fine. I, however, not that good with the, with the jigsaw, I guess. So uh, <laughs> it cut, it cuts just great. It's just you really got to pay attention because that is not the best cut. But it's my first, it's my first one, and we're going with it. Um, uh, and at the end, make sure you support it, or if it broke off here in the corner when it fell to the ground, because uh, I guess I'm not that intelligent. But um, this is a handle I'm going to go with, and figuring out where the stuff goes can be tricky. Um, uh, I use chose to use uh, that style there at Home Depot and square head kind of uh, screws. Now what, what's going to have to happen is your uh, handle is going to come with hardware like this, but obviously that's not happening. So uh, you have to go and find uh, whatever this screw is, that same thread in a, in a metal. Well, I got these are socket cap screws. So, uh, and then make sure that you get the correct drill bit, the 1 8 that I got, and it's not even close. It needs to be a lot bigger. So I'm here trying to remount these holes um, <laughs> uh, with the drill bit while I, uh, while trying to get it uh, um, symmetrical. So at least I got that part done, right? Uh, now it's trying to figure out how I'm gonna screw these uh, in the side. I, I wanted to get something nice in the side. I got, I got these um, 
Well, they're pan heads, but they're square, a square bit, which I don't have the driver for. So, yeah. Uh, I guess I have to make another trip. All right, see ya. All right, we're moving along now. Um, and there she is. Um, I guess I'm okay with it. Uh, these handles are tough. Um, it's my first one. It's not the best cutting of, you know, there's a chip out of the top there. Um, but it, it's good enough for government work, I guess. Um, and these sheet metal screws, I'm using these, what are they called? Uh, Everbuilt and whatever other brand it is. They come different. <clears throat> so that head of that pan head is bigger than that one. What's this up here? Oh, that's just what's okay. But um, yeah, seven more to go, and hopefully uh, it'll get better. Sorry, I have a hard time focusing. But and because my cut's so bad over here, I used one of the really nice, the Honey Edge, to square square up at least one side one side of the uh, drawer. And the other one, it's hard to tell what, what's going, but you can see there's like an over a little bit of overlap there, and then it gets square up here or flush up here. Nothing you really can do, and this stuff is way too expensive to uh, uh, do over. So, yeah, um, moving on. Okay, so here's what the uh, drawers look like. You can see uh, that little piece of hardware. I mean, that screw is not what it came with. It has that hex. Come on, it has that hex head. So. Uh, that's how I solve that problem. And uh, yeah, so that's how it looks from the other side. And uh, here's a little extension piece you're gonna need for the screws I use. Uh, let's see, for the, I probably already said this, but. All right, so finally have all of the uh, drawers done. And um, man, I tell you, it's more of a challenge than I thought. <laughs> uh, one thing is um, that if you use the jigsaw blade with a plexiglass, uh, the plexiglass blade with a jigsaw, I discovered that um, have it on a low setting or a medium setting, because uh, uh, high setting will grab the blade and get you offline real fast. And I found that out after doing five of these, and some of them, um, now it's hard to see, but uh, these cuts are not that pretty. <laughs> you can see there, um, kind of waves here. I don't know, it's just really, yeah, you can see how nasty some of these cuts are. I tried to, you know, it's really hard, and it's really expensive to work with that material, and I don't have the budget to uh, <clears throat> go and buy more plexi. But they work. It's functional, and you know another thing is that, for example, that uh, roller on the left. You can actually see it in the video here. Is higher than the one on the right. So I have a tilted drawer here. So even though I thought that I had the measurements after you know three or four times measuring it before I executed any type of rail placement they're off so now I have an inch here gap virtually no gap here half inch gap here and then and then another really tight gap there but it works it's my DIY I uh, first time doing anything like this and I definitely learned a lot of lessons and it could use a little more lateral stabilization. I don't know how to brace the cabinet, but like I said, it works. It works, and it's uh, it's mine, <laughs> so it's my piece of crap. So uh, I'm thinking maybe uh, to do something like to. I don't want these raw ply edges to show, and plus this gaps here. So I'm gonna do something like wrap it on top with like a little molding around, and put something down the middle and then maybe stain it but hell it works expensive and then I'll, when i do my final video i'll go through the whole thing but yeah it's getting there almost done peace all right looks like we have uh the 
trim on. I uh, hope you guys can see that. So instead of having the, the kind of exposed looking um, uh, um, ply, I, I've got three quarter inch trim and I put it put it on. So it's just better than that raw look, you know. But um, yeah, just whatever you do, don't be drunk in Home Depot and originally buy this kind with with the leaf pattern and then by this kind, the, the scroll pattern, <laughs> the second time, and not even realize you're installing it improperly or not as the same <clears throat> until you're already finished. But that's me. Um, and I think I'm gonna go with a peak and stain. Actually, it should, I think it should be a little darker, but that's, that's what I'm going with, screw it. Okay. Uh, Stating's complete. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, the top is a sanded, sanded birch, and um, the camera may not pick this up, but actually got a cool candied effect, like the top of a guitar. I made some mistakes. It's the first time staining anything, really. And as you can see here, a little over, over stain kind of pulls up, and I did it really bad here. Where I try to get rid of brush strokes on the fourth coat. This is fourth, and by adding more stain, trying to get rid of brush strokes, I actually just ended up creating a pool. Mm -hmm. So lesson learned there. But it's in the back, and whatever. But um, you can see this nice little strap of dark, dark stain here. And as you move, it changes the color. It's pretty cool. But anyway, um, the light's not good, and. Uh, especially with any type of trim, I made some mistakes. There's a, there's a few drip, drips where it's overstained, but eh, you gotta get really close to see it. Um, but yeah, I think I'm done here. Thank God. <laughs>